We have seen that the position of a hydraulic jump in a channel depends on the downstream water profile that is controlled by the downstream flow conditions. For example, here, for this downstream level, we have a M2 profile that crosses the M3 prime curve here. If the downstream level increases, as illustrated in the second situation, the intersection will be shifted in the upstream direction. Then, if the downstream level further increases and becomes larger than HU in the present example, we have a M1 profile instead of a M2 profile. And in our case, this M1 profile does not cross the M3 prime curve anymore. In such a situation, the flow under the gate is submerged. And when the flow under the gate is submerged, instead of a classical hydraulic jump, we observe the formation of a submerged jump that will be directly linked to the downstream water profile. In the case illustrated here, it is a M1 profile. The submerged jump is composed of a fast flow below the gate and a roller area above the jet with a depth HM. In the roller area, the water recirculates and does not flow in the downstream direction. This recirculation is illustrated here with a ball trapped in a submerged jump. We see that the ball cannot flow further downstream. It remains in the roller of the submerged jump and it is not swept away but by the bottom jet. The equation of the hydraulic jump aims at determining the depth H2 at the downstream side of the jump. This H2 depth is the depth that will be connected to the downstream flow profile. However, unlike the classical hydraulic jump, we don't have one single depth of interest at the upstream side. Here we have the depth HV uh, that corresponds to the gate opening and the depth HM um, of the roller area. To write the equation using the same methodology as for the classical hydraulic jump, we will need to identify a suitable control volume and make some assumptions. In the submerged jump, the fast jet under the gate progressively spreads over the whole water depth. We will select a control volume such that we can assume a parallel flow at the upstream and downstream sides AB and DE with uniform velocity distribution, so the coefficient beta is equal to 1. We will also assume a almost horizontal bed in such a way that we can neglect the contribution of the weight in the flow direction. And we will also neglect the friction losses along the bed and the walls. Finally, we will assume small velocities in the roller in such a way that it can be considered as a body of water at rest with a hydrostatic pressure distribution along BC here. We will write the Euler momentum balance over the control volume A, B, C, D, E. First, we write the forces. We have the weight of the water body, the friction forces and the hydrostatic pressure forces. According to our assumptions, the gravity and the friction are neglected so that we only consider the pressure forces. On the upstream side, According to our assumptions, we have a hydrostatic pressure distribution over AB due to the parallel flow assumption and BC due to the assumption of water almost at rest. So the pressure force on ABC is written like this, with ZGM being the depth of the center of gravity of the section AM. On the downstream side DE, we have a similar expression with a negative sign. And finally, the balance of forces is written here in equation 1. For the momentum balance delta mv, we consider the difference between the momentum in the initial volume a, b, c, d, e and the momentum in the volume a prime, b prime, c, d prime, E prime after delta T. This balance 
can also be written as the difference in momentum between the two highlighted volumes. And finally, the momentum balance is written as in equation 2. Combining equations 1 and 2, we obtain equation 3. Then, dividing by rho g delta t and replacing the velocity by q over a, we can write equation 4 that presents a similar form as the specific force equation of the classical hydraulic jump. Indeed, equation 4 can be rewritten as equation 5 in which we have the specific force Fv at the section AB of the gate and the specific force F2 at the downstream side ED of the jump. So we finally write equation 6. In this equation, we see that the quantity in brackets can only be positive as the static moment of a cross section with respect to the axis L plus delta L corresponding to a water depth H plus delta H is larger than the static moment with respect to the axis L for a depth H. So this is the case here as the depth HM is larger than the depth HV at the gate. We can represent the specific forces as illustrated here. Point A represents the specific force Fv at the gate. For the specific force F2, we have two possible situations, point B and point C. However, point B is impossible, as it would correspond to water depth H2 smaller than the water depth Hv, which is in contradiction with the assumption of a hydraulic jump in which the sequent depth H2 is larger than Hc. So we have point C, with H2 above Hc. This confirms that the water profile that starts downstream of a hydraulic jump is subcritical. In the calculation of a hydraulic jump, we usually consider a rectangular cross-section at the gate, and we usually know the, the upstream water depth H0 and the gate opening Hv. The discharge is determined as written here, using Torricelli's formula adapted to our situation. So we see that we have three unknowns, the discharge Q, the depth of the roller Hm, and the sequent depth H2. The discharge depends on Hm, but Hm depends on the discharge and on H2, and H2 is the upstream end of a subcritical water profile that depends on the downstream level and on the discharge. So the three variables are linked by a series of equations that cannot be solved straightforward. Therefore, a trial and error process will be used. Let us describe the link between the discharge Q, the depth in the roller area Hm and the downstream depth H2. The specific force equation can be written as in equation 1 or, after developing Fv, considering a rectangular cross-section, as, as in equation 2. We can see from the discharge equation that if we assume an increasing depth of the roller area Hm, the discharge will decrease. And so, the new specific force curve will be the red one that is everywhere below the initial curve. The gate opening Hv remains the same, so the corresponding specific force Fv decreases. Rearranging the terms, equation 2 can be written as in equation 3. From this equation we can deduce that F2 will increase. Indeed, if Hm increases, the first term here remains constant. The second one increases. The third one also. The fourth term remains constant and, as a consequence, F2 will increase. As we can see in the figure, a higher value of F2 on the red curve implies a larger value of H2. So this analysis here will be useful to guide the trial and error procedure for the calculation of water profiles with submerged hydraulic jumps 
as we will see later. So in this lesson, we have seen that a submerged hydraulic jump appears when, a, uh, when an upstream underflow gate becomes submerged. The presence of a submerged jump affects the discharge that decreases as a consequence of this submergence. This will influence the subcritical flow profile that develops downstream of the hydraulic jump in such a way that a trial and error procedure will be adopted. So we will see in the next lesson some useful rules that can guide this trial and error procedure. Goodbye!